black car of the Green Hornet slid through the darkened back streets of the city like a purring shadow. It was after midnight, and behind the wheel, the Green Hornet himself expertly maneuvered the long, gleaming car. He smiled beneath the grim black mask that covered his features. Then he spoke to the figure beside him. Hope you're not superstitious, Cato. Well, superstition not good for logical thinking, Mr. Brick. So I'm not superstitious. Good. We're in back of the museum now. Do you have way to get inside? Yes, the curator's office is at the back. The receiving room where they do the unpacking of museum pieces is just beyond. It won't be difficult to get in there. I'll stop here. Come on, Cato. I'm coming. Here's the door. It'll be easy to open. Well, I understand museum protected by burglar alarm. Well, how will we get by that? I was here today at a meeting with a curator. While I stood talking in the doorway on the way out, I managed to disengage a certain wire that runs up to the door jamb. I had a feeling I might want to get back in. I'll get the door open. The scout's engaged to do the trick. Will they have guard in museum? Yes, but he's in the museum proper. He won't come into the black unless he has a reason to. Let's go in. Give me the flashlight and then follow me. Well, here, light. Come on. That's the door to the receiving room. There's what we want to see. Why we come to look at money case, Mr. Pitt? I'll tell you later. It was unboxed today. It doesn't look as though it's been disturbed. Yeah. What do you think of? I'd like to have a look inside, kiddo. The money cases usually seal hermetically. It must be easy to wait. Look here, kiddo. What do you have on your hand? I'm not mistaken. It's a bit of rubber cement. I rested my hand along this edge of the case. Well, ancient people not use rubber cement. I know. Give me a small chisel from that workbench over there, kiddo. Oh, yes, sir. Hurry, Cato. Here, Cato. I'll soon find out how well sealed this is. Hey, look. The lid ready to come up easily. It's loose enough to lift. Come on, help me lift it open. Oh, it's big black cat. It's gone over behind packing boxes. The cat business can wait. Cato, look in the mummy case. The body of man. Mummy, not there. He hasn't been dead long. Kiddo, that's the body of Gerald Loomis, assistant to Dr. Kingston, the archaeologist who... The guard coming through the museum. Who put out light? We leave quick. Come on, hurry. Paper, Mr. Brick. What paper is it? We're Daily Sentinel. How good. Gunnigan got a lead on the others for the news. Well, it didn't take them long. We've been here at the apartment only a short time. Uh, let's see. Oh, so they're blaming the Hornet for the murder. Eh? Well, guards see us as we leave. Yes. Well, Mr. Brick. Yes, Kato? You not tell me what it's all about yet. I'll tell you now. It all started when the Daily Sentinel helped finance an expedition headed by Dr. Kingston, the archaeologist. Oh, I remember that. With permission of certain governments, he set out months ago to locate the tomb of King Melikin, who was said to have ruled long before King Tut, but whose tomb was never found. You see, Kingston was connected with the army, and during the war found certain parchments which led him to believe he could find the tomb. Why oh, read about that? Well, the expedition was successful. And yesterday afternoon, those most concerned gathered with reporters in the receiving room at the museum to review the unpacking of the mummy case. It was a proud moment for Dr. Kingston when the mummy case was finally unpacked. The mummy case containing King Millican, who ruled about 6,000 years ago. Oh, he called. It don't seem possible. 
It's a matter of record, actually. It will be a great exhibit for the museum, Mr. Reed. As curator here, I wish to congratulate both Dr. Kingston and the Daily Sentinel. Well, thank you, Mr. Norwich. The discovery is Dr. Kingston. The Daily Sentinel only made it possible. Dr. Kingston, do you intend to open the mummy case today? Or oh, this is the assistant curator, Howard Washburn. Dr. Kingston and Mr. Reed. How, How do you do, do, Mr. Reed? How do you do? Now, to answer your question, Mr. Washburn, I prefer to delay opening the mummy case until my friend and assistant, Dr. Gerald Loomis, is present. Uh, why ain't he here now, Dr. Kingston? Gentlemen, so that you'll understand, let me explain something. Gerald has been very close to all this for months. Some of the legends connected with King Melikan became almost true to him. In Melikan's day, the people worshipped the black cat. Can you beat that? Must have been a pack of head and quiet, actually. Go on, Dr. Kingston. When we opened the tomb, two large black cat figures were guarding it. Is it true, Dr. Kingston, that there's a fabulous ruby set in a gold crown that was buried on the mummy? That's part of the legend. We'll know when we see the mummy. But to get back to Gerald Loomis, he became rather superstitious about the black cat, so that this morning when he received a package containing a small figure of a black cat with a printed note saying, Revenge for Milliken, it unnerved him considerably. Well, Did he go to the police? Yes, of course. I decided it was the work of a crank or a prankster, and the police were inclined to agree. But Gerald wasn't convinced. He stayed away today, but promised to come tomorrow. This uh, information about the threat is off the record, of no, course. Certainly, certainly, Doctor. Now, who could have done a thing like that, I wonder? Well, that's hard to say, actually. Gerald said he felt something would go wrong when the mummy was uncovered. But wanted to be there just to see him. So you'll open the mummy case tomorrow, then? Yes, without fail, gentlemen. I'm sure Gerald will be here. And I'm sure all your papers will want the story. So I'm inviting all your reporters to be present. And it was after the hearing about the threat, Loomis and his fear of being present when the case would be opened, that made me determined to go to the museum ahead of time and open it. And you know the result, kid. Then body and mummy keys is that of Dr. Gerald Loomis? Received black cat as threat? Exactly. How he got there, what happened to the mummy, and who is responsible is a mystery. A mystery that I'm going to solve one way or another. Morning, Casey. Reading yet? Oh, yes, he is, Michael. He's asking for you. Casey, what do you think about them black cats and all? Really gives me the creeps, does it? <laughs> Don't be superstitious, Michael. Hmm. That's what they told that Loomis guy. And look what it got him. It's a mystery, all right, but there's some logical explanation. Okay, I'm waiting. Explain it to me. Oh, go away, I'm busy. But anyway, wasn't the Green Hornet seen leaving the museum room where the body was found? Uh, he was. Of course, the cops think he's behind the whole thing because of some ruby or something the dummy had on him. Mummy is the word. Sure. Mum's the word. He won't tell us all. Oh, oh, look, don't try to be funny. You said the ruby was on a dummy. You meant to say mummy. Oh. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know how that harlot got mixed up with them black cats and all, but he's at the bottom of the whole thing, says I. Well, it's very simple. He found out about the black cat legend and used it to play on the superstitious nature of Homer. Say, no. Maybe you got something there. Casey, sometimes you really talk sense. <laughs> oh, thanks. But what would the harness want with the guy that's been dead for 6,000 years, I'd like to know? You said yourself it was because of the famous Melican ruby, didn't you? Sure. But why didn't he just snatch the ruby and beat it instead of taking the mummy, too, and then killing poor Loomis? If I could answer that, I'd join the police department, Michael. Anyway, I think oh, it's hey. about time to... Here's Dr. Kingston and Inspector Evans. Good morning, gents. Good morning, Action. Miss Casey, is Mr. Reed Yes, Dr. Kingston. Just a moment, please. Yes, Miss Casey. Uh, Mr. Reed, Dr. Kingston and Inspector Evans are here to see you. Yes, go right in. Yes, sir. Mr. Reed says to go right in, please. Thank you. Come, Inspector. Uh, I go along with you, Inspector. Well, Dr. Kingston and Inspector Evans, glad to see both of you. 
I'm here too, Reed. Yes, sir. What we have to say is off the record, Mr. Reed. So if uh, Mike Axford might like to leave... Oh, we'll... don't mind me, Inspector. Talk right up. Goodbye, Axford. See me later. Huh? Oh, <laughs> sure. Hey, <laughs> was just leaving. <laughs> so long, Inspector. <laughs> That's <laughs> quite a chance. <laughs> Perhaps we'd better tell Mr. Reed why we're here, Inspector. Oh, yes, of course. Are you developing, Inspector Evans? Yes. Of course, your paper has played up the findings of Dr. Kingston's expedition to some extent. Well, that's right. Since the Daily Sentinel financed it, we followed its progress closely. Naturally. We know that the Green Hornet is mixed up in the murder of Loomis and the disappearance of the mummy. But we believe someone connected with the project must have been working with him. That sounds logical. Now, the mummy, as such, is of value only to the museum. So we figure the motive for the crime was to gain possession of the gem, which was said to have been buried with the mummy. You refer to the Melikim Ruby, of course. Yes. If there really is such a stone... That's a matter of legend, Inspector. The mummy case was shipped unopened, direct to the museum. So you've told me before, Dr. Kingston. We're checking everyone connected with the case, Mr. Reed. But in the meantime, the black cat, or uh, perhaps we should say the green hornet, has reached out again. Well, what do you mean? Although Dr. Kingston takes the matter rather lightly, two more small black cat figurines have been received. Really? By whom? One by the curator of the museum, Mr. Norwich, and the other by Dr. Kingston himself. Inspector Evans and Dr. Kingston had entered Britt Reed's office for a discussion. And finally, the inspector told Britt that two more threats had been received. One by the curator of the museum and the other by Dr. Kingston. Brett thought for a moment, then spoke. How does the curator react to the black cat figurine he received? He seemed a little nervous about it. Of course, a printed note similar to the first one was received with each figurine. Mm -hmm. Revenge for Melikin. I believe those were the words, weren't they? Exactly. It was said that the effect of the mummy case of Melikin were opened... The sacred black cat would come to life and take revenge. Oh, that's very interesting, Doctor. Who outside of yourself knew of the prophecy in the parchment? The curator of the museum, Loomis, my assistant, and I were the only ones who were interested enough to delve into the prophecies of the parchment. I see. Inspector, have you started a search for the missing mummy? Oh, yes, Mr. Eden. I had men from headquarters turn that museum receiving room upside down. Looking into every empty box and crate, but we found no trace of them. Of course, a mummy is shaped like a body, but is not flexible. It would be difficult either to take away or to hide. Well, that's a very interesting point, Dr. Kingston. By the way, uh, do you have any idea of what would have taken your assistant, Gerald Loomis, to the museum, especially after he was too nervous to attend the opening of the packing case yesterday? It could have been morbid curiosity on his part. A sort of a hypnotic state of mind that drew him there, induced by the wording of that note and the little black cat figurine. Oh, I don't believe that. Such a supposition is almost an admission that the black cat legend is true. People in Millikan's time believed it. Personally, I like cats, black or otherwise. Oh, uh, what are you going to do about the threats to the curator and Dr. Kingston? Mr. Norwich is at his office at the museum. We have a plain clothesman posted outside the office entrance. The museum itself has been closed to the public for the time being. And, uh, what about you, Dr. Kingston? I can take care of myself. We know the green hornet was after the ruby. And did away with Gerald Loomis. I've already said we don't believe the hornet was working alone, Doctor. I know, Inspector. But I believe he planned it. Perhaps with the help of someone like, uh, there's someone who might have learned the contents of the parchment. Like Washburn, the assistant of Norwich, for instance? Could be. I know little about Howard Washburn. We'll have him picked up for questioning this afternoon. Well, I guess we'll be on our way, Mr. Reed. I'm glad you came in. Sergeant Burke, I've waited all afternoon.
afternoon for you to bring in that assistant curator, Washburn. And now you Hold come on, in here. here. Wait till you hear. We were waiting around that museum for him to show up. I wandered into the receiving room to get a look at that mummy case. Well? Wait till you hear this. I heard a whining and scratching coming from inside it. I called Norwich and Cassidy. We opened the mummy case. Glory be. Well, what did you find? A black cat jumped out. And there inside that mummy case was Washburn. Dead as a doornail. Cato, I'm going to sit here in the living room and do a bit of thinking. Uh, I'd like some coffee. Oh, well, yes, sir. I bring it right in. Perhaps if I could recall some of our conversation today in the office. Let's see now. Kingston made an observation about the body. Of course, a mummy is shaped like a body, but he's not as flexible. It would be difficult either to take away or to hide. He's right about that. A mummy would be stiff. He'll hide it in a hurry there in the museum. He had definite ideas about the crime. He even threw a hint at them. But I believe the whole the planet. Perhaps with the help of someone like you. Someone who might have learned the contents of the box. Like Washburn, the assistant of Norwich, for instance. Now Washburn has become one of the murder victims. I wonder if... Hello? Yes, I heard about Washburn, if that's what you mean. Oh, you did. But ain't they read the cops are all set up about it? They're reading their class to catch that murder 300. Well, what are they planning to do? Pictures suggested that him and Norris go to the museum site and stare at the inside alone. Then the cops will be burned out of sight on the road outside. If half the murder alarm connected up in case anyone tries to get in. But the killer might be hiding on the inside already. the night guard. Yes, I'm sure I found the missing 
tell me in this case. Oh, yes. The wrapping around top of head looked newer than the rest. That's right. But notice how expertly it's been rewrapped. Now we're going to the receiving room. Something happened in the receiving room. The killer. Come on. By killer, he's fainted. Nothing but a superficial wound, Cato. Never mind him. Let's get the mummy case open. Quick. <laughs> there are men in mummy case. Yes. Dr. Kingston. Help me get him out. Yes, sir. <laughs> get some water from that sink over there. Hurry. Yes, sir. Water. Is he dead? No. He got a nasty blow on the head. But he must have stabbed Norwich in the struggle and that weakened the blow. But then Dr. Kingston tried to kill Curator? No. The black cat killer is Norwich, the curator. Kingston must have carried a knife for protection. Why had I dare you suspect Dr. Kingston? I did until I saw the wrapping on that mummy. Only an expert could have done it so well, such as the curator or his assistant. Norwich's hands are covered with cat scratches, and he finally gave himself away by putting Kingston in the mummy case. Will we leave now? Well, first we'll bring the mummy back in here. Then I'll leave a note for the police. Kingston's testimony will do the rest. Let's get busy. When we leave and remove your little gadget, the alarm will bring the police in for the catch. Hey, Inspector, the killer is getting in. Come on. Hurry, Sergeant. Wait for me. Here come the rest of the boys. Okay, man. First in the door. Receive room through there. One of you boys shut off that bell. Okay. Glory be. Look there. Kingston and Norwich both lying on the floor. Kingston. Are you all right? What happened here? Hey, sir. Look at here. Here's an all pinned on Norwich. Bring it here. I'll take it. Here it is. What's it say? Norwich beat me to the ruby. He's the killer you want. Since I can't have the ruby, I'll see that he doesn't have it either. Signed, the Green Hornet. Here's a drink. He's trying to put the blame on Norwich. Oh, no, it's too. Norwich is the killer. He came at me with, with that chisel there on the floor. I stabbed his arm. He stuck me. And then I remember him putting me in the mummy case. That's all I remember. Hey, Inspector, the mummy's back in the case. Oh, all right, right. Well, what do you know? Yes, the wrapping's been removed from the head and then put back. Newer than the rest of the wrapping. It took an expert to do that, though. Meaning Norwich? Possibly. We'll get the truth from him before we're finished. Well, that heavy chisel is a murder weapon used on the other two. Take it for fingerprinting, Sergeant. Yes, sir. He must have kept it hid somewhere. We looked all over the museum. Hey, Carl, look here. What's that you got? Well, see it for yourself. It was on Norwich's desk. Uh, some sheets of paper from the museum heading on them. <laughs> well, there's print on the top one. What is it? It says, Revenge for Malikum. Norwich was going to pin that to Kingston's body, I guess. Didn't get a chance to set that heading off. We'll match that paper with the other notes. Also the printing. That'll clinch the case. Take them away, boys. All right, all right. Holy crow. That revenge stuff really works after all. Imagine the green hunter doing a job for a guy that's been dead 6,000 years. I guess he's the one who put that dummy back in the case, eh, Sarge? Mummy's the word, Ashford. Huh? Oh, sure. I won't tell a soul, Sarge. <laughs> ah, shut up, you dope. <laughs>